Hey everybody, this is Dean and welcome to Dino's Tech World. Today I'm going to show you how to use a program called Wi-Fi InfoView to determine the best channel to use for your Wi-Fi router, access point, or hotspot. I'm going to be just calling it Wi-Fi router because all of these things work the same and they're pretty much the same thing. It's a way to connect to your internet uh, through Wi-Fi. So the first thing you'll notice here is there's a bunch of columns up here that I have um, shown in like a spreadsheet-like format. The first two columns, I've blanked out the name and the MAC address, which identifies the, the Wi-Fi uh, access points um, just for security reasons. I don't want to give anything away about the particular um, Wi-Fi access points that are around here. Uh, but normally you would see an ac a MAC address number here, which would be hexadecimal number, and then a name for the uh, router. We're going to be using this particular um, Wi-Fi router as our example. Um, so uh, we'll be looking at that. But before we get into that, let me show you a few of the uh, options on this software that you can adjust. So if we go up to view here, I actually... Uh, chose the columns right here. So I checked off the ones that I wanted because it shows a lot of uh, columns that you may want to go through this and see if you want to look at these for any reason. But in this case, since we're just trying to choose the best channel, I, I only selected certain ones to show you uh, just an example of the stuff that it can show and to uh, highlight the specific channels that we really want to, or the sp specific information that we really want to look at. And so if you wanted to show all of the columns, you can click on default here and it would uh, select all of the columns again because that's the default. Or you could select all or deselect all and so on. Pick whatever ones you want. Uh, so that's one thing I wanted to show you real quick, quick here. Also, you can actually put these out into an HTML report if you want to and it will bring it up in a web browser and you can save it uh, as that. Uh, so there are a lot of different um, options here. Uh, we're using the full, it says full detail modes, but we selected particular co columns in here. So it, it's moved it down so that there are less columns. Uh, but you can actually have all these different summary reports. So it will... Um, sort things by certain uh, fields and aspects uh, but we're actually going to be doing that m manually most of the stuff on this report as, as we're looking and trying to figure out what the best channel is so this is our uh, our uh, Wi-Fi router right here and uh, you can see the signal strength at uh, 97 98 right now the frequency is the 2.4 gigahertz band it's on channel 11 it will tell you what type of router it is. It will tell you the security it's using. Um, it will tell you the channel width and all this other information down here. And there's additional information available, as I said. So since we're on 2.4 gigahertz, there are 11 channels on 2.4 gigahertz. But the problem is that only channels 1, 6, and 11 don't overlap on the 2.4 frequency. Uh, so we have to be careful of that. On the f 5 gigahertz frequency, there are like 161 channels that don't overlap, but we actually use multiple channels um, uh, to, uh, to broadcast and receive on in the 5 gigahertz so that we get more bandwidth, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's start with the 2.4 gigahertz example here. So right now we're looking at signal strength. One thing you want to look at is, is you go down here, like these lower signal strengths uh, down at the bottom don't make as much difference uh, to us because they're farther away and the signal's um, much weaker. So it's not affecting our network as much or it's less apt to affect it. Uh, you can also see over here to the left there are bars like on your cell phone to show you how strong the signals are relatively. So if we go back up here, the only ones or the major ones that we might be concerned with 
is this next one that, that's around 90, uh, high 80s and 90s. And then there's one right here that goes up into the 80s. And sometimes this one drops down. And then there's this other one right here. Right now it's at 50, but it jumps up to 70 sometimes. So these might be ones of concern. Uh, of these, if we go over here to frequency, you see two of these are in the 5 gigahertz frequency. And since we're on 2.4 gigahertz, it's not much, as much concern to us, or it's a no, of no concern to us because it won't even interfere with us. Uh, but the ones, the closer ones that are at uh, 2.4 gigahertz, particularly the one that jumps up to 70 sometimes, are of more of a concern. Uh, so we may want to start to look at what the channels are. And we can see over here uh, that one of them is on channel 6, which is not an issue for us because we're on 11, but the other one's on 11. Uh, so then we want to look at the channels. We're going to sort by the channel. And you can see there's a bunch on 6 and there's a bunch on 11. Uh, and there's only one that has a stronger signal on 6, and that one might not be as much a problem. If we only had a choice between 11 and 6, the closest channel 6 to us is weaker than uh, the closest uh, channel 11 to us. So we might consider moving to channel 6, but there's no channel 1s around at all. So a better choice would be to switch to channel 1, and then we would not have to worry about any interference because there's no uh, channel 1 that's anywhere uh, close in range or close to us. So that would be a good choice for our hotspot here. Now, the other thing we could do is we could go to um, 5 gigahertz. The problem with 5 gigahertz is if you have things like IP cameras and other um, home automation devices, they may not run on 5 gigahertz. They may only run on uh, 2.4 gigahertz. In that case, you could move to 5 gigahertz for your laptops and your desktops so that you get better throughput on those and set up a 2.4 gigahertz channel on your router um, for things like home automation stuff that uh, might only be compatible with 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, you can actually on most routers set up both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. You can set up either or or both at the same time if you want. And so that might be a solution so that you can get some of the uh, devices that aren't compatible with 5 gigahertz on a separate network and, and it will still be running uh, the way you need it. Uh, so that's a consideration um, for that if you move everything to 5 gigahertz. If you move to 5 gigahertz and let's uh, sort the frequency so 5 gigahertz is at the top. At 5 gigahertz um, You'll note over here, there's a few things. There's 161 uh, channels on it, but they're combined together because there's a, they use those channels to make an 80 megahertz um, bandwidth. And uh, so you can actually change the speed or the maximum speed of your router. And depending on what you change it to, it might be instead of 80, it might be 40 or even down to a 20. Uh, megahertz bandwidth, but it uses a range of channels and it shifts around those channels and tries to find the best channels. So even if somebody's on the same channel as you, it's going to try to shift around and use some of the channels the other router is not using, but there still can be some conflict and it can still slow down, particularly if there's more than one person on the same channel. Uh, so, you, But you still want to try to spread out and be a different channel than, than other people. Uh, but the problem with that is you still may not have all the a free channel entirely on it so you can look at the channels right here and try to pick a free channel or one that's used less the other thing that you could do which in most cases you would probably not have to do is you could reduce your maximum speed and that will reduce the channel width and there'll be less likely that you'll conflict uh, but you probably only want to consider that if you're actually having some sort of problems with 
with your speed or uh, reliability or the network seeming to cut out at times. Uh, because what happens, like I said, it's going to use multiple channels and it's going to try to avoid other nearby channels. So uh, what happens is it actually will most likely will just slow down your ban bandwidth or throughput at different times of day. Uh, so it, it, you're probably going to get maximum throughput at certain times and other times maybe not. So if you reduce the channel width, that's going to sh slow down your um your maximum speed and in fact the way that that a lot of routers will say it will tell you what speed that you can run at and it will determine the channel width based on that it doesn't really ask you the channel width so that's another thing to consider you really probably don't want to reduce the maximum speed of your router unless it's like a really congested area with um, five gigahertz that's less likely because less people use 5 gigahertz currently than 2.4, but that could also depend on your area. So that's just another thing to consider. So that shows you some of the things you consider when choosing the channel and the frequency that you're using for your Wi-Fi router. This has been uh, Dino's Tech World, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like.